Are you ready? Are you ready for video three? Because this series is how to process your images to express your feelings, which is super hard to do. So let's get to it. Okay, if you haven't watched video one or two, then I suggest that you do it now. Go below and click on the links and start with one and then two, you'll do your homework and then come back to this video. I think it will really help you when it comes to expressing your feelings while you're post-processing. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna have more textures, but why am I using these textures? What makes the feeling come out through using textures? I'm also gonna share a, one of my favorite tools to help you see the vision that you are going for. And then I'm going to also ask you to analyze your work, to stay away from it for 24 hours, come back and analyze your work so you remember that what you wanted from that vision stays that way because post-processing can start changing things up and you want to make sure that your vision is always on track and also i'm going to share how important it is to keep layers when you're really post-processing and going with the flow and things may change up so it's good to have those second layers or the layers down below that you've worked with to remind you of what you wanted in the first place. So that is a lot of information. So let's watch the video and I'll see you in the backside. Now I could leave this image the way it looks now. It looks actually very pretty. I want you to feel the beauty of this elegant tulip. So I'm went on. I definitely gave myself a break and said, okay, it's time to move forward. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to push it and play. So I'll share with you the steps that I did to get to the end. So what I did was I played with a variety of other textures to see what I could do to pull out the colors and the feeling of depth within the background of the tulip just to enhance it and I like these circles in here it kind of feels like little halos so this is one of my textures and again if you do not have any textures just go down below you can sign up for my email and you will get free textures with the video on how to use them what I want to do is I know that the composition is vertical so I'm going to go over here to image and I'm going to change it to counterclockwise yes that looks good because i know the tulip head's going to be right around here somewhere and i'll go ahead and now just hold it keep my mouse down go to the other image here this is the one we're working on and i'm going to just push the shift key down and it'll center and release the actual texture and it will center it. Now it just over here to the right, when I released it, it pushed it down below. If that happens to you, you're like, where's my texture? Just remember every single thing that's on top of the layer is what is revealed. So each time there's a layer, whatever's on top will be revealed. So it's control for PC, command for Max T. You hit that and T, the letter T, and it gives you the transform tool and what I'm going to do let me bring this down so you can really see I'm going to just drag this on top of the photograph or on top of the top layer and I'm going to push enter and now it's locked in and just like before you can't see it but if you turn down the opacity you'll be able to see the background but I could tell already that I may want to stretch this out a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this up. And just like the other 
texture. To remove all of this would just be a pain, and since we already have mass from before, we'll just drag it up. So that's what we'll do now. Okay, so you push, just go ahead and push on the Alt and Option, and I'll go ahead and drag it up to the texture and let it go. I like the way this looks right here. Here is full opacity with the mask. You can see it. But I'm going to turn it down because it's too distracting to my tulip. I just want the colors and I like the pops. So let me go down. Now I'm going to make a stamp just so you guys can see it. And I'm going to go into color effects Pro to make some of those colors in the background really pop. Okay, so here's Color Effects Pro, and there's recipes down in here. If I want to play with the recipes just to see what it does, it's a great tool to give you ideas, to you know, help you with you know what your goals were and what you were going for. There we go. That's what I like. That looks pretty. Doesn't that look like Halo? I can turn it down in Photoshop also if I want and then okay it's really making this dark in here I'm gonna go ahead and set a mask in here and just start to paint around with my paintbrush I'll play with this a little bit start cleaning it up maybe taking it down a little bit so we can see the I mean I don't want to you have to look at everything with really close because one of the things that I had said is I really want you to see backlighting of these beautiful leaves so I don't want to mess with that so I'm gonna go ahead and just clean this up a little bit lighten it up and we will start the next section so here's a perfect example of what happens to us when we start post-processing I like it. I'm, I removed myself because it just wasn't feeling the way I wanted it to feel. And so I said to myself, okay, what is the problem here? Well, I feel like it's a little too soft in here. I'm not really getting the background colors that I want. So there's a couple of things that I'm just analyzing it and saying, okay, there needs to be some change to it. Do a command control J to copy it. And I'm just going to place it above it. And of course, it's way too crazy. But at least I'm seeing some of the background. I know it needs to be fixed. I'm feeling, okay, this is what I wanted. Why do I even put a texture if I'm not really feeling it? So I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. And then what I want to do is add some more sparkles. See how the sparkles down here below? Well, I'm not really feeling the sparkle up above sure again that I used before but now I have a lot of the sparkles at the top and then I'll do the alt and option and I'm going to drop in and as you can see it looks kind of funky so it's time to play with the feather of this and the density to see how it looks then I'm going to you know, add the sparkles so we can really see it. And I'm going to change this to soft light. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I like that. Maybe I'll just keep that. And here's some sparkles. And if I keep this, I'll turn it down a little bit. Yeah. So here is the before and here's the after got a little bit more sparkles, a little bit more detail. And as you can see here with the mask, uh, I played with the mask so, it's, so I could add some of the color to it. If this was totally off, this would just be too much in here and too much of the, the light. So here is the mask. And I did like the way the color hit the flower. So I went ahead and painted that back in with the white just adding some of that color back in. Okay, so the last part of the post-processing that I figured that I should share with you, at least um, major post-processing and really bringing in those textures and tones and all that, was I, let me show you how close it is. So 
the see how this is really harsh and it looks good the color but it's just too much uh, the background is should enhance not take away from the main subject so I added a stamp and because we have the mask it's so easy what I decided to do was blur the background out so if you have anything that's just a little too crazy you could go to filter blur Gaussian blur this is a great tool to really play now you can see everything's blurry but if you're just looking at your background and you just want to play with it a little bit that's too much let's do the right here's a preview here's the before and here's the afterwards and again you know it's up to you and how much you want and how you feel but we'll just go with this and I'll take this mask down here because it has more of a complete mask for me so I'll do alt and option drag it up to this area and just let it drop and here's the before and here's the after and what's nice let me lock it because I don't I actually want this to be locked because I don't want to mess it up but look at the flower now not only has the Gaussian blur helped the background but it's helped the flower feel soft and elegant and the petals so here's the before and here's the after I really really like the way this feels so in this series we started with this image this is just one of the three that I shot and I put together to make this so you could see the details of those leaves I just wanted to start off fresh and clean I next took it here and started doing some post processing and just getting the feel of what I wanted I next took it here which is beautiful and I actually like this it's really really pretty we're gonna go here in two weeks with a bonus video to really hone in and manipulate areas of your photograph to really tell your story were you surprised you probably thought the third one was over but I'm going to give you a bonus video and this bonus video are for those of you that really want to be professional and being that professional that many of us strive for then I suggest that you go ahead and click here to watch my macro photography live chat show I have some amazing photographers and I myself personally give you a lot of tips and tools so check that out and I will see you in two weeks with that bonus video. Cheers.